Hello, you wonderful people, and welcome to another episode of Crime Centric. This being a show, it's about crime dramas that I watch. For today's episode, I'm going to talk about the latest episode of Barry. A lot of really interesting things went down in this episode, so let's break it down. Just showing how far off the reservation Barry's really falling. He's kind of very delusional. I guess that's... It's just... It's just a, every episode is just like... Ugh, ugh. It's just... He's just kind of out of his mind. So the whole thing of... Barry... Um, well, because... Gene's in this weird split uh, place because he's got everyone like you know in the makeup department being like, oh my god, we heard so much about what you did for this marine, his story and stuff like that, and it's just like, oh, it's so amazing, it's so inspiring, and it's just kind of like, right, I have this job because this psychopath who killed my girlfriend is putting me in this position, and then I love that uh, they're like, oh wow, that's so amazing, and then like Barry's like, Gene, Mr. Cousineau, what do you say? And he was almost like being treated almost like a child. I was like, thank you. Uh, or, or something like that. And him and Barry had the interesting conversation of, did Janice suffer? And he was just kind of reluctant to answer. And he was like, no. But then it was like, okay, that guy, who was he? He's like, no one. Okay, all right, I want to be a little honest. That guy, uh, he was kind of like a family friend, so he was like an uncle to you. Yes. And then, like, he pieces it together. That's the guy that got you into what you do. And now I love it that he's like, now I remember your monologue that you gave me in episode one of the series. Now I realize that was you actually telling me. I was so caught up in it believing that was some monologue you created. Now I realize in retrospect, no. In hindsight, that was you telling me the truth from the very beginning. And I just didn't listen to you. And then he goes, I recited that monologue in front of Janice. And now it's like... I'm the reason why she's dead. And, you know, Barry's like, no, 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 you shouldn't blame yourself. It's not your fault. It's like, yeah, it's, it's Barry's fault. Barry's the one that pulled the trigger. He's the one that's the bad guy in this situation. So it's like, no, that's not on Janice. He's even saying like, no, it's okay. You shouldn't blame yourself because Janice would have figured it out anyway because she's a good cop. But it's like, right. She might have already had her inklings about Barry. That definitely was like the fight. That was the light bulb moment for her. The moment Jean recited that story and then it clicked. And that's when she connected Barry to the, the figure from Hank's camera. But would she have gotten there eventually? Probably because she's really good at what she does. Despite all the misleads that led to her there. She still probably would have eventually figured it out. But she probably already has some twinge of an inkling in the back of her mind. And that was just the final piece to the puzzle. So, um... But, uh, you know, and then Barry says the most delusional thing that he's just uh, out of his mind. He's like, it was an unfortunate situation. It's like, yeah, I think uh, Gene's really going to look at it that way of you saying like, oh, it's, it, referring to murdering Janice, the woman he loved as just kind of an unfortunate accident. And, and he has a nerve to kind of put on like, a little bit of a psychotic smile. And obviously the, the scene that they're doing parallels their kind of situation to some extent because he's trying to get the, he's trying to apologize to uh, Gene's character for like something that went down that like hurt him in some shape or form. I, I don't remember the context of it now, but it, you know, it's almost like makes you think Barry almost probably thought was uh, um, almost meant to be the characters they're playing and the roles they're playing considering their circumstances too. Uh, I even love that the moment they're doing the scene, I was like, is that Mark Paul Gossler? It sure as hell was. I was like, holy crap, okay. I recently saw him, and he did, it was like, what, two or three episodes back, uh, most recent, I saw him on the um, Inside of You podcast with Michael Rosenbaum, uh, Michael Rosenbaum's podcast where he talks to people. Uh, but yeah, as soon as he go back and finish that episode, I was like, probably like, like halfway through. It was really, really interesting, kind of uh, get his insight on a lot of stuff. But yeah, it was just like, hey, in interesting timing on that part. But um, yeah, but when they actually, in the scene, Barry's like, you know, he does this thing. And I was curious whether or not, because if Gene did say like, oh, I'm sorry, I forgive you or whatever. If he had actually said that, it would have given Barry the satisfaction because it would have felt like, ah, Gene does forgive me. Because, once again, Barry's so delusional, he believes, he's talking to Fuchs later on. It's like, oh yeah, me and Barry, uh, me and uh, Gene were in a good place. It's like, are you doing... Why would, why would you actually be in a good place considering everything if you've done? That man's not going to forgive you so easily. But Barry's so delusional. He's like, no, it's going to work. It has to work. Because once again, doesn't want to kill uh, Gene because if Gene dies, everything he's kind of built, his foundation is barely holding it together. There are so many cracks in the Barry block. Uh, I mean, I say Barry block, but it, it, because 
Barry's holding on to that version of himself because he likes in that version of himself. He's like, you made me a better person and all that, right? So he's holding on to Barry Block so hard, but, you know, that Barry Berkman is breaking through and it's crumbling and Gene's the last bit of that foundation that's holding on. And once that fully breaks, which it already has, but Barry's so delusional, he's thinking he's able to tape it all together that everything's fine. and It's not. So... That was interesting, but I was curious what Gene was going to do, and he sits, slaps him and he says, like, stay away from my family, like, I want nothing to do with you. Stay away from me and my family, like, I'm never going to forgive you type of thing. And I thought the rest of the crew was going to be happy. They're like, oh, wow, that wasn't in the script, but that was a good choice. I thought that's where that was potentially going to go, but no. In fact, all that matters storytelling-wise is how that affects Barry, because Barry had gotten a job from Hank. Because I figured Hank was going to turn to Barry because he's like, hey, this is our go-to guy to do some work. But, well, well, we'll get to Hank's side of things. But Hank calling him for work, I knew that was going to happen. And now he's like, right, uh, he thought he could hold on to it. It's just like, you know, screw it. I'm going to go back to what I'm good at, killing people. Just give me a job, pay me, and, you know, that was all I've ever really been good at. So here I am trying to hold on to some shred of humanity, hold on to myself. And all you see is Gene running away saying shit. Because he's like, I, I let my anger get the best of me. God, I piss off a psychopath. So the question is, what is Barry going to do? Is he going to kill Gene? Or is he just going to be like, no, Gene's not going to say anything. Because Gene knows if he says anything, I will kill his family. So maybe that's... I don't know. I don't know if Barry's going to try and repair things from here. Whether he realizes there is no repairing it. So once again, Barry is falling off the deep end bad. Once again, he was already kind of like... Once again, not the best person. Now it's like, yeah, oh, yeah, he's going, he's going to go completely bananas. Which that's also an interesting conversation between um, the head of the uh, Chechens and um, Hank, because it's like, okay, you want to bring in Barry, the Madman, who, and I, I was in the season, uh, the season two finale, being like, does he think no Hank did all of this? But I guess he was happy because he saw all those dead Bolivians. And he's like, oh, everything worked out. But that was before he found out, oh, cool, all of uh, our people are dead, too. So now he knows, like, oh, everything. Because I was thinking, like, he was going to celebrate Hank. But maybe he did for a while. But, oh, my God, Hank, you did it. Oh, or at least you got someone to do it. Yay, Hank. Oh, our people are dead, too. Barry did that. The dude who killed Esther and a lot of Crystal Ball's people of the Bolivians. Oh, cool, but uh, he's a... Uh, he killed some of our people, most of our people, with the exception of two people, oh, and Hank. Uh, so, but he's like, right, you did that. But instead of, like, letting Barry take the fall, you made Fuchs the fall guy, which that fell through this episode. Now, um, you don't want us to kill, you're making excuses not to kill Cristobal. He's like, I'm sensing a pattern here, something's not right. So, his boss is suspicious. Because given the opportunity, it's like, right, the Bolivians struck at us while we were going. And it's like, and Hank's like, oh, who says it was the Bolivians? It's probably like some punk kids in the neighborhood. It's like, no, it was the Bolivians. We got to hit back hard. We got to kill all of them. It's like, I guess it's like, yeah, they were going to call back up from uh, Chechnya. Because I'm about to say, there's only four of you here. Like, what are you going to do against an army? But it's like, no, we got this. And then it's like, right, we're going to call in our Patsy Fuchs was going to trick him into coming back. Like, oh, everything's copacetic. Everything's good. Fuchs says no, which we'll get to the Fuchs side of things soon enough. But um, so when that happens, their plans kind of fell through. So the boss is like, you know what we're going to do? We're going to set a bomb and we're going to blow up uh, Cristobal and... Hank is like, no, let's not do that. And I love the others are like, wait, especially the one dude who gets forced to do it. He's like, no, no, why do I have to be the one with the bomb? But, you know, um, Hank is like, no, 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 we'll bring in Barry. He'll take out Fernando. It'll be all good. We don't even have to go out there. Uh, Crystal Ball. Crystal Ball's like third, fourth, fifth in command. Fernando, he's the one that's really in charge. We'll unravel everything by taking him out. He's most likely the one that gave the order. So... Hank doing everything he can to protect Cristobal. Cristobal, on the other hand, is doing the exact same thing. And that's a sad thing. Like, they weren't able to talk this episode, but they are both trying to do the same. Like, he's trying to, like, at least he's pointing them towards wiping out Fernando, which he doesn't know that that's Cristobal's father-in-law, because killing him is just going to, Elena's probably just, his uh, wife, um, Fernando's uh, daughter, is just going to want revenge, most likely, and probably put Cristobal in that position of, you have to get revenge for my father your father-in-law, and then, you know, that's going to be a whole thing, but also, like, Cristobal is trying to be like, oh, Fernando, we don't have to do it, the Chechens, they're most likely on the run, we don't have to do this, you were right, I'm very really good at my job, but there's nothing here in LA, let's go, and, you know, 
And Fernando's like, all right, we'll go back home. We'll take the guys out to eat. And, you know, I'll take them to Johnny Rocket. And then, like, you know, when we, you know, there, I'll break the news to them. We're going back to Chechnya. So, I mean, uh, we're going, uh, we're going back to Bolivia. Hank's boss seems suspicious. It seems like Cristobal's boss, you know, Fernando seems like he's saying what he thinks Cristobal wants to hear, but it definitely, he gets that inkling like he knows like something's more, but maybe not. It's just both worlds are going to collide. Like things are going to turn into a complete another shit show next, next time because Barry, you know, he accepted the job. He's going to end up killing Fernando and them. He won't kill Cristobal unless he gets into another rage again. And he, you know, uh, home dude who I kept forgetting his name last season, uh, was, it, uh, Maybrick, uh, that dude like killed him and a whole bunch of other people like lost his shit and went crazy. So the same thing could happen here. I'm pretty sure he'd leave Cristobal alive because he knows that's someone important to Hank. But we see how Barry is not in a good place. Uh, wasn't in a good place when the whole monastery thing went down, as Hank kind of puts it. It's like not he's a, as he said, like having a bad day. It's like yeah, not having a great day right now either. So we'll see how that all shapes up and uh, plays out. Speaking, of, going back to Fuchs. Uh, the lady he was introduced that was introduced last episode that he's with uh, seems like they're in a relationship and he's actually found peace. He's actually taking care of goats. So when um, Hank goes like, "Oh, you can come back. Barry's cool. Everything's fine." And it's like, well, actually, Barry's kind of in a rough place. And hearing that Barry was kind of doing kind of shittily, um, Fuchs was actually worried about him because despite everything, he still carries. He still cares about Barry, which is... That's a whole fucked up dynamic that they have. It's like, oh, let's screw you with each other over. I tried to kill you. You want to try and arm yourself with an army to protect you from me and potentially kill me in the process? It's like, yeah, just the back and forth between them. But it's like, right, they've been in each other's lives for so long. They're, they're family, and it's like families fight. But it's like, yeah, but our circumstances are all kinds of jacked up. So there is that. So, but uh, Fuchs doesn't want to come back because he's like, no, like the ha life he's built for himself here. He's like, actually, I'm really good at taking care of goats and stuff like that. And he's happy and he's in love. But then he calls up Barry. He's like, hey, Barry. And f the way Barry talks with him, he says, hey, it's like, he isn't as angry. I guess it's like, right. It's like, I guess he's so busy on fixing and repairing everything. He's like, no, it's good. And Fuchs is like, yeah. So, you know, I'm sorry that you, and Fuchs gave like the most half ass apology because he's almost like, hey, I'm sorry that it seemed like um, you might misconstrued uh, blaming me for what's going on between you and Gene. I'm like, how are you not, how are you half assing this? You know you're directly responsible. You literally told Gene that it was Barry who killed Janice. Like, what are you doing? You're unraveling his life. Like, what are you talking about? And then he was like, okay. And Barry's like, okay, I accept it. He's like, you have anything you want to say to me? Nope. And he's so upset by it. He's like, Barry, I'm in a hospital. I'm dying. If you were going to say anything, now would be the same time. It's like, why do I hear goats behind you? And he's trying to justify it by being, you know, because both of them, neither one wants to fully, fully acknowledge and admit what they did wrong. Barry recognizes it, but he's trying so hard to be deluded. He's being so delusional about it. He's kind of pushing it aside. Fuchs just straight up refuses to believe he did anything wrong, that Barry's the one that's 100% in wrong. It's like, if you made me do this, if you had betrayed me, if you had screwed up my deal with the Chechens, like the whole, um, and the Bolivians and the whole like heroin thing, like if you hadn't blown that deal up, we, I could have been golden, but you had to screw things up. It's like, well, to be fair, you screwed up his life before you got in good. Well, he was already setting the groundwork with that deal before him and Barry had their falling out. And then, you know, things got even further effed up in that falling out. But still, so, um, but uh, yeah, he's kind of, he still thinks like, right, I, he's so mad at Barry. He's like, I want to kill Barry. And, um, his, um, lady friend, I guess you would refer to her as, tries to stop him not going down that path of revenge, which, obviously, it's like both of them are caught in their cycle of revenge. He wants revenge against Barry, Barry wants revenge against him. It's like, yeah, he kind of seemed like, Barry seemed like he might have been in a better place. Like, oh, I'm, I think if Fuchs was in front of him, he'd still probably kill Fuchs. But at that, at that time, he was like, oh, me and Mr. Kusino are like, everything's great, like, we don't have to worry about it. But then, um, you know, Fuchs is like, oh, you're full of shit, like, you really think he's going to forgive you? And now that it kind of fell apart like that, he's probably going to go back to hating Fuchs. And he's like, oh, if I ever see, if I ever find you, I will kill you. So, 
and Fuchs was going to do the same, but he was told the story about, like, oh, like, the path of vengeance, and it's like, okay, a guy came and killed all these people on the land, and these people became vengeful spirits. They could either forgive him and go to heaven, or they could seek revenge. Most people, with the exception of the little boy, sought vengeance. They turned into panthers, killed the landowner, did their thing, but they were forever dragged to the bottom and forever in torment and pain. The little boy, because he forgave, went off to heaven. And Fuchs, all he took away from that story is, so you said this happened to a friend of yours. She's like, no, it's a fable from like the 16th century or something like that. And it's like, oh, uh, he's like, oh, how, you, how long did it take? How long will what take? You know, the whole Panther thing. It's like, it didn't take any time because it's not real. He's like, uh, but it could be. So it's like, okay, so Fuchs is going to probably manipulate the current circumstances with Hank, not knowing that they were ready to throw you to the wolves. And that's still at play because regardless, he's not, he's still the patsy whether he realizes it or not because the moment he steps foot back in LA, because I think he probably believes what Hank said that everything's okay. So the moment he comes back, the cops are going to be all over his ass blaming him for Genesis death because now it all falls on him and the whole thing at the monastery too so his need to get revenge on Barry is going to come back to bite him in the ass because um, the whole point like the story she was also saying like right if you uh if you're trying to poison someone you might as well drink it too that's what po uh that's the her, her um the, now the antidote she used for um uh you know the path of vengeance which ironic um Vermita used the term antidote when referring to a poison in that analogy but you also have uh, the the one I always think of is like when you're seeking revenge, dig a grave not only for the person you're trying to kill, but for yourself because you'll always kind of pay the price in the end. Once again, I don't think Barry's walking out of this oh alive, but we'll see. Um, it's just I don't think any there's not going to be a happy ending all across the board. Is kind of what I'm getting at. So you have Sally doing a press junket for. Um, her show and everything. I didn't even talk about it last episode, but there was that whole situation with that other show, Pam, which is basically about abusive relationship, but it's like, right, it seems like it's not as serious. It does seem like it's like a comedy or something. I'm like, oh, that, uh, that's, I guess that's the fucked up dark humor of it. It's like, oh, like, of the, the nature of the show, Barry being like, oh, there's a, a show about abuse and stuff like that, but that's a comedy. To be fair, to be fair, there are sitcoms that dealt with some pretty heavy shit. Like, um... Like Roseanne, for example, uh, I've not, I never saw like the new season when it came back, or I've never seen the Connors, which I'm sure they still deal with that. But even back then, Roseanne dealt with some pretty heavy shit. Like Jackie's husband, or was it just boyfriend? Her significant other was abusive. Like and once again, it's like a lot of sitcoms, like especially in the '90s. I mean, I'm sure maybe even older sitcoms dealt with stuff like that. And, and I think sitcoms even today still kind of deal with. I mean, it just depends on what kind of show you're trying to make. But it's like, I guess it's not that out of that like the realm of possibility but regardless her doing that junket was so interesting because it's like this is a hyperbolized version of it but it's still like i've watched enough junket stuff to be like oh that's kind of true how it's like yeah you literally like you have to talk to so many people who are going to ask you the same questions over and over and over and over again and a lot of people try their best to separate themselves from other people but it's like right i know i'm asking you the same questions everyone else is so i try to sprinkle in my own my own flair because i know like you're literally being interviewed every day over and over again in different places, different countries, probably being the, asked the exact same question. So, yeah. But the junket thing, especially because it's like, yeah, just like, okay, here's someone like, oh, hey, here I am for like this two to five minute interview. Okay, I'm done. That person leaves, another person comes in. I, like I said, it's something I'm aware of, but them showing it like that, it's like that first person like, oh, I'm from E! News. And I'm like, are those real people from those respective things? I'm not sure. Uh, but she she asked one question and she's like, ah, ha, 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 And then immediately leaves. She's like, that wasn't even, that was like 30 seconds. I was like, I love it. I guess it's like, right, it's just meant to be B-roll, I guess. But I'm like, that's, oh my God. I was like, that's, uh, it's so true. But like I said, it's a heavily, heavily hyperbolized version. And it's like, oh, so who do you think should be the next Spider-Man? Which I'm like, first and foremost, I'm like, we have a Spider-Man. It's Tom Holland. To some people's argument, he finally became like this more traditional comic book Spider-Man after No Way Home. Yada, yada, yada. So on and so forth, right? So I thought that was interesting. Because I don't know what date the show is supposed to be taking place in. Because I don't, it, it hasn't jumped because of the whole two years in production, between productions of like season uh, two and three. So I don't know whether this is supposed to be like, this show was always set a little further in the future or something like that or whatever. Because I'm like, 
not because I could have sworn like last episode Gene's phone said it was like December, like or at least maybe the last messages between Barry and him was like when the didn't the date say like December twenty first or something like that. So I was like. Maybe they never said the date or something like that. I don't know. They, they, maybe they keep it super vague, so maybe the show's like actually further back in time or whatever. I'm like, Tom Holland's been Spider-Man since 2015, 2016-ish when he was cast. So I'm like, that's kind of an interesting thing. But, oh, who do you think the next Spider-Man's going to be, which is interesting. Um, and I love Sally's response of mm, Ben Mendelsohn. And I'm like, that's an interesting choice because funny. and it, Well, it ties in with Katie's. Uh, choice as well and they're like oh yeah they asked me the same question oh what'd you say and she's like um harry styles i think and it's like shit that's a good one which i'm like okay if you're not familiar with the marvel stuff uh that's funny on so many levels i'm like when did they write those lines i wonder was that written before like who knows how long ago they wrote this season or you know or maybe they only re wrote it recently because like those are two spot on especially the harry styles obviously the ben Mendelssohn thing still would have been known because he was already captain marvel had already i mean in between this and season three like captain marvel already came out and he was ben Mendelssohn is in the mcu as uh was it talos one of the scrolls um because he also popped up in captain marvel he also pops up you know in far from home i think far from home's the last time we've seen him so far and then also the harry styles things because he popped up in the post credits for Eternals, and uh, playing Thanos' brother, so you're like, so both of them are in the MCU, like, that was, had to be, like, a little bit of a, like, Hollywood inside joke, like, the way that was written like that, but, uh, yeah, uh, Sally was like, oh, so we're going to, like, something, um, you want to ride with me and Barry, and Katie was like, uh, no thanks, I I'm good, and then Nada comes over and she's like, right, when they offer you, you should take that. It's like, oh, but I, I'm not really comfortable around Barry. Like, the way he yelled at her. It's like, yeah, Barry yelled at her. He's done that before, which, once again, kind of seems... I don't know what... Well, she's referencing some of the school stuff, but that's why I'm like, I don't know if she's referencing the past couple months as well. Uh, but then you add in, she's like, yeah, and Barry also yelled at us. But he's okay. He's a good person. He's not a bad person. I mean, he was a Marine and he killed people. And that's just sending Katie further and further down a spiral because she's like, oh, like he might do something bad and worry about it. It's like, oh, that's that's going to be a major storyline. It's just like how Katie handles this and what that's going to turn into. Hopefully it doesn't turn into a situation where Barry ends up killing Katie, but maybe he'll recognize where she's coming from and stay away from Sally and they go their separate ways and everything's going to be copacetic and he doesn't end up doing something terrible like end up killing Sally which is something legitimate that's kind of been in the back of my mind I'm like once again I made the Joe comparison it's like well he's killed the two previous women in his life well technically three well no because I'm trying to remember did he actually kill Candace I don't remember if he did he attempted to kill Candace the first time yes love killed her in season two spoilers sorry but like you know Beck Candace and love are all dead so two of which he killed himself one, he attempted to kill, but Love ended up killing Candace, like I said. So, that's why I was kind of getting those vibes, like, oh, is he going to end up killing Sally because she's going to be... But, still could end up heading down that direction. I hope not, especially with the Katie thing, but Katie might end up getting killed because Barry doesn't... Like, she might stumble, because she might be keeping an eye on Barry, and she might find out what Barry's up to, and now Barry has to decide, like, oh, this is another person who knows what I'm up to. Once again, what about Ronnie's daughter? She's out and about. We super... It's, super never dealt with that she's just out in the wild but it's like she's so feral that i guess he doesn't have they don't him and uh folks never worried about that again just kind of left that open in it but uh yeah i also was wondering why i recognized the actress who played katie um i was like why does she look so familiar uh i looked it up i believe the actress's name if i remember correctly it's um elise fisher correction her uh name is elsie fisher but apparently her middle name is kate which i was like oh that's interesting. Do you think that was done on purpose or not? Sometimes it's always interesting when, like, I don't know, I, regardless. And maybe that's just coincidence. And regardless, doesn't matter. I was like, why does she look so familiar? Uh, I've never seen it, uh, but it's like she was the lead in the movie Eighth Grade by uh, Bo Burnham. Because I've heard nothing but good things about the movie. I've, I was, once again, I'm not the movie person. So there's so many movies I want to see that I haven't. But I think that's what I best know her from. And I, I, the reason why I think I kept looking at her face recognizing it, but I couldn't place it. Because obviously she had longer blonde hair then and her... Um, her hair is like obviously shorter and, and brunette now, so I think that's what's kind of throwing me. So it's going to be interesting to see what this whole Katie situation goes and how that plays out with everything that's going on. And 
the way Barry's acting, and now that he's in a bad place again, especially when it comes to Gene, how that reflects on his relationship with Sally, which isn't in turn going to affect how Katie views him, which Katie's already, he's already in her bad, like, and it's interesting, because I think that's probably what they're trying to get you to feel, too, with this, too, is to feel the way Katie feels, because even she was asked questions, like, oh, how's it good, like, uh, and she has to lie and be like, oh, yeah, uh, she's in a great relationship, because it's like, who am I to really talk about someone else's relationship? Other people saying it's okay and it's fine, but she read, she She's noticing the red flags, and it's also like, who am I to call out someone's boyfriend that I don't really know? Everyone else says he's okay, and you know, now I'm worried about Sally because now I know that she was obviously because of this work she's done, and I've she's grown very you know attached to Sally, knowing like right what she went through before with Sam, and now I'm seeing like with the cycle sort of repeating itself with Barry, but uh, we'll see how that all plays out. Um, I'm excited to see where the next episode ends up taking us going forward with all of this. Uh, but really, that's all I'm going to talk about. Till the next time we meet, be happy, be safe, live life to the fullest, and enjoy it. Good day and goodbye.